Right, so now that we know what liquidity preference theory is and what constitutes the supply for money, uh, we can now use both the liquidity preference theory and the supply for money to determine the interest rate in an economy. So on the x-axis I have the quantity for money and on the y-axis I have the interest rate. So if I sketch the LP curve, this is what it will look like. So this over here is a liquidity preference curve. Now, now the supply for money. The supply for money according to the monetary school of thought will look like this a straight vertical line now the liquidity preference theory curve is a downward sloping curve because the higher the interest rate the more households and firms will wish to hold non money assets and the lower the demand for money and the supply for money curve is a vertical straight line because the central bank controls the supply for money in an economy independently of its price so the money supply is exogenous the equilibrium interest rate is the point where the money supply intersects the LP curve that's this point over here so the equilibrium interest rate will be over here now, this side, shaded in yellow, is transactionary demand and the precautionary demand for money, which is the active balance uh, of the LP, LP curve. This side is the speculative demand for money, which is the idle balance. Now, so let's say an interest rate uh, above the equilibrium, say over here. So, at interest rate R1, this, wait, this over here is the quantity for money and this over here is the interest rate, yeah. So, at R1, it's greater than your equilibrium, which means that the demand for money is less than the supply for money that happens people will buy more bonds they will hold less in the form of speculative demand for money and they'll buy more bonds they'll invest for greater returns when that happens the price for bonds and the interest rates fall and we and we reach the equilibrium on the other hand say if the interest rate is over here r2 this means that there is excess demand which implies that money supply is less than the demand for money so people will react by selling bonds and when they sell bonds the price for bonds will fall if the price of bonds fall interest rates will rise and we'll reach the equilibrium because buyers will be found only if they receive a higher financial reward through an increase in interest paid out to them which means a higher financial reward means that a higher interest rate so if the interest rates are low they will sell bonds and when they sell bonds the price for bonds will fall which means when price for bonds fall interest rates rise and we will reach an equilibrium interest rate again the liquidity preference curve shifts to the right if income levels rise if price levels rise or if there's an increase in the perceived risk of holding bonds. That is, um, say if a government is about to collapse and people can um, already sense that, they will increase their supply for money. They will sell all their non-monetary financial assets um, just to get out of the market in time. And the money supply shifts when the government increases or decreases supply for money because the money supply is exogenous. This means that only the central bank controls the supply for money. 
So that's it for the liquidity preference theory. In the next video, we'll talk about the loanable funds theory.